going on YouTube Tom here and I apologize in advance if this video is not of the greatest quality once again or if my energy just still doesn't seem like it's perfect I'm still kind of in that post accident jitters phase here as I'm trying to drive the Mustang so I know my energy is definitely not there I'm still a little upset I'm still kind of shaken up by the whole thing but I figured you know what let's let's do this let's just continue to make content I, I think moving on is some, sometimes it's the easiest way to to get back to normal so yes I am looking for a new daily driver right now once again like I said my dad's letting me borrow his truck and then I also can just drive the Mustang on the weekends like I normally do so the good news is, I don't think I'm going to be hurting for vehicles, and hopefully I get a good settlement from the whole accident deal. But, I figured, you know what, let's make an, a different type of video today. It's actually been a long time since I've made kind of a, just an opinion video on a general topic. So, people are always kind of discussing car mods on various Facebook pages, Instagram, YouTube. And I figured, let's make one about the, you know, the five in my opinion, worst car mods right now. Kind of the worst automotive trends that I think just need to die. They just need to go away. You all need to stop doing them to your vehicles so we can just, we can get on to good stuff with cars. Now, these five things are my opinion, what I think, I do not like to see on cars. These are, I apologize in advance to any of you who subscribe to this channel or watch my videos have this done to your vehicle because don't take it personally but these things I don't like and also these five things they're not going to be in any particular order it's just five random things I really don't like so number one is one that everybody just really dislikes and there's definitely a lot of offenders around here with this one and that is popcorn tunes they just end up being Annoying, regardless of who you are, regardless when you're standing around at a car meet and some guy decides to set off his popcorn tune, it annoys you a lot. Now, the other thing with popcorn tunes, they're not even in general that bad, but a lot of guys go well above and beyond just a little pop, pop, pop. They're around here. These guys seem to love them that go off like gunfire. And it just sounds ridiculous. And that's how you get a meat shut down because it sounds like gunshots are going off in the background. And those who've never heard gunfire, that's what they're going to think. That's when it starts to get shut down, and that is straight piping every single car possible. Now, straight pipes have a purpose. The idea is you need an exhaust system to take the exhaust gases out the back of the car, but, but you know, you want it to save weight, you want it to flow better, whatever. You straight pipe it. A lot of race cars do that. A lot of, you know, drag cars have it. A lot of road course cars will have it. And the idea is simple. You want minimal back pressure and minimal weight. That's great. Now, and this is mainly going at you all 
than all y'all with Mustangs. And also, in general, the Tampa Bay area. Where I live, it's perfectly legal to straight pipe your car. But here's why you really shouldn't. Because most cars that are straight piped, they sound awful. <laughs> Mufflers have a purpose. And that's to quiet down the sound and also reduce a lot of the sound effects cars make. Now, believe me, I love a loud exhaust just as much as anybody else. I have a resonator delete on my Mustang. And, and I think it sounds absolutely amazing. You all hear the cold starts with a lot of videos I make with this car. It's worth it. If you get the right setup, it sounds so good. But noticeably, I still have a muffler on my car. I have mufflers, I should say. Because it adds tone. These cars straight pipe, they sound downright awful. And it's not just Mustangs who do it. Any of you all in a VQ motor, 370Zs, G35s, 350Zs, etc. It's, it's a little bit much, and your, your cars, those sound like trombones going down the street. Eh? So guys, please consider that before you straight pipe. Your car is just simply not going to sound as good. I know you don't want to spend the ridiculous money for some of these exhaust systems, because I know with Mustangs, they, they have got, they, they're starting to run into some serious money now. But I recommend it. Get something professional. Don't just hack off your exhaust and call it a day. All right. Now, number three. Number three of the, in the world's worst mods are the Camber Gang guys. Now. Camber is a bit of a tricky subject because a lot of performance cars are cambered slightly. Slight negative camber for when you're going around a corner, you're braking hard, etc. When you're on a track, it makes sense. That's you know, race cars the same way. A little bit is acceptable because of that. Now it's you know it's what manufacturers specs will end up being. However, and this is mainly to the Honda guys, although Volkswagen guys do it too. What is with the ridiculous negative offsets, guys? The ridiculous just cambered out where you're using like the last, you know, this much of your tire. You know, the only advantage I can find with that is you're gonna save money on tires because then you just flip the tire around and use the other side. You get kind of double the tire life. It, it just, it's dumb to me. And I never understood that, I mean, Someone might have done it originally to be different, maybe, because everybody, you know, slightly cambers. Maybe somebody decided to go all out. And again, it's kind of like, you know, low riders in general, a lot of features of them came from racing, or so everybody claims, such as the big wheels with low-profile tires, the big brakes, the slotted and drilled rotors. And so, you know, so does the camber. I mean, yeah, it comes from racing, but it's just, it's a little much when the car is cambered. I mean, some people, some of them go way, way out there. And I mean, it's not, it's not even that I hate Hondas. I don't want it to sound like I'm, I'm, I'm dissing on the Honda community, because I really love a, a nice, clean Honda. But the ridiculous camber, it's just, your car probably is not gonna handle very well because of that. And in fact, some of them, you actually hear them driving, it's making all sorts of noises because your CV joints are now at maxed out angles, so. I'm at a loss as to what, what the purpose of the ridiculous camber cars are. I mean, someone can enlighten me on why it would be a cool thing to have, but I'm just at a loss. I just don't see why you would want the cambers on your car. Why would you want that ridiculous negative camber? So, until somebody properly explains it to me, I'm just going to continue to say I, I don't get it. I'll, item number four here is we're gonna, we're gonna go back to the truck community here. And that's squatted trucks. Now, I love lifted trucks. No shame, bit of a, bit of a redneck here, so I really love to see a nice lifted truck build. Nice off-road tires, nice lift kit, get it up in the air so you can have some ground clearance. And you know, and then you see some of the more show trucks, but they're, they're still lifted, but you know, they're not necessarily for off-road, they're just more for the style. Fine, I'll allow it. But the one I will never understand, and I, to this day I'm still trying to figure out what, where it came from, and 
as the squats, you know, also known as the Carolina squat, or lately I've been seeing it get called this in the Tacoma forums, and that's called the, it's called tooted. So basically what that means is your front is lifted way up in the air, but then your back end, and in the Tacomas especially, you take the rear blocks out and you actually drop the back end. So it just, it just ends up kind of proving how useless a lot of these lift kits are. Because you end up in a situation where you can't really use your truck as a truck anymore because everything would just roll out of the bed. And of course, you've now reduced your load capacity because of that. And on top of that, it just looks dumb. You're now, as a driver, you're now facing up in the air. Your headlights probably don't even point at the right direction. And why would you do that? Why would you not just lift it all the way around if you're going to? Because, like I said, I love a lifted truck, and I think a lot of other people do. Squatting it just looks horrible. And it's always got to, and then as always, they put the toe mirrors on them, and then it looks ends up looking like you're on like a ghost trailer. I mean, to each their own on that one. Like I said, I love trucks because of this, you know, the accident I had this week. I'm in the market for another Tacoma right now, so and there's a very good chance I could be lifting another Tacoma or whatever future Tacoma I get. So, you know, I, I, I like lifted, but I just will never understand it. It looks like, and the common joke is, it looks like you, then you ran out of money to finish your lift kit. So, I mean, again, someone explain it to me. It, and then, of course, the fifth and final thing while we're going on, appearance. This has been a bit of a, a trend I've seen around in the area. And that's with vinyl wraps. Now, I like vinyl wraps as much as anybody else. Vinyl wraps are cool. They have a very good purpose. And that is, you want to change the vehicle's paint without actually painting it. Now, a good quality paint job is, you know, 20 grand or more for certain vehicles. And I know someone will say, oh, no, my boy will do it for 600, but... All right, you want an actual OEM quality paint job where the car is truly painted right, it's going to cost you. And a good vinyl wrap, most cars, you can wrap an entire car, you know, for about 4000 or $5,000, which is still expensive, but it's definitely a lot cheaper. And plus, you don't mess up the paint that's already on there. You know, the car's got... It's kind of a collector car or something. You don't have to mess up its factory paint job to go ahead and put a, go ahead and put a vinyl wrap on. If it's done correctly, you can just remove it whenever, and the paint underneath will be fine. But a lot of guys take vinyl wraps a little too seriously. The guys will turn around and put on these horrible wrap jobs that just are tacky dumb looking it just lets you know that they have they have more money than you and they don't care now, I mean and, I, and not to call the owner out on this but there's a, there's a Lamborghini Huracan in this local area that I've seen a few times at a few different car shows he, he always has a different rap job on it now, I've talked to the owner he's a cool guy but when I first saw the car it had this hideous purple camo on it which really wasn't that bad, but it was like, all right, you know, to each their own. He likes it, whatever. He's got more money than me, clearly. That wasn't bad. You know, it, it was one paint job. A wrap job, I should say. The very next time I saw the car, instead of the purple camo, he had changed it to an emoji theme wrap job, which was just a little bit extreme. It was like, oh, okay. You know, I get it. You like emojis, all the different emotions. It's, they have a purpose. I use I use emojis too in text messages. Kind of show my my purpose, show them some statement. But it was it was loud and it was just kind of out there. And then the most recent time I saw, he had a Toys for Tots rap job, which now it's it's actually cool because that's for charity. It had a purpose, but it was still like, wow, you spent how much money to get that done? Looks like the car was gift wrapped, which was, I mean, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't a bad idea, but it was like, it's just out there. And I mean, there's more examples of that. It's, he's not the only one. There's a lot of them around. 
Some are much cooler than others. I mean, if you have the right setup for, you know, a show car, I get why you'd want a, a really cool wrap job. And of course, now, like I said, you can do it a lot cheaper than you can a paint job nowadays. And if you want to undo it, you just peel it off. So, that is my five things that I really wish would go away in the automotive community. Now, again, that's my opinion. That's what I think. Everyone else is going to have a different opinion on that. I don't want to sound like I'm, I think I'm better than anybody around here, but let me know in the comment section below. What are things you don't like that you wish people would stop doing? What, what are things, different automotive trends that you don't like? If you like this video, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. If, this, if everybody kind of likes this, then I'll probably do more of these, you know, five things of what I think about videos. Anyway, if you're stopping it for the first time, go ahead and subscribe because, like I said, as the this virus begins to go away, I'm definitely hoping to start going back to car shows soon. Cars and coffee, and of course all of that. But anyway, take care, have a good day.